appears that there's some um, confusion because as far as we were concerned, the um, costs were settled between the parties, including costs up and until the uh, Court of First Instance hearing. Right. So therefore, the costs that we would be um, looking at today um, would be costs involved since that hearing, that that would be the costs involved in preparing for the appeal and the appeal um, hearing itself. So, so it's not clear for you what is uh, item four is about, like the cost of the proceeding. Mm -hmm. That's um, what you're saying. But the, the the cost of the proceedings, I don't think we can we can argue that um, costs don't follow the event. Um, what we do say is that the claimant rightly says that there is a practice direction that says um, mm -hmm. pending detailed assessment that right. the court can order um, up to fifty percent of the costs. But firstly, we haven't seen a breakdown of these costs at all. And secondly, um, I find it somewhat surprising that uh, the claimant puts those costs, that is the cost since um, the start of the appeal, to the appeal, to be in the region of $200,000. But we haven't seen any, any uh, narratives or, or cost summaries. There's it does any, seem excessive. There is any application but for that? Is there is any? Have you, put, have, have you claimed that cost yet? We, well, we claimed in the sense that we pleaded for them and requested them. Yeah. We haven't put in the cost schedule solution to this cost. Okay. I don't know if that's actually right. In terms of the court of first instance, those costs were agreed at, I believe, thirty five thousand dollars and paid. So obviously we're not making reference to those costs. The substantive cost, I think the general cost of putting things together and so on, those are the costs that we're seeking and they do with the court of appeal uh, to today's costs, but also the cost of dealing with the, the application that was dismissed on the papers. Now my instructions are that they do run into my suggestion would be that if um, which is only fair that the court would prefer to see the detailed cost schedule of all those costs, I think you're given a few days to put those in and then the issue, this issue be dealt with on that basis, 50% of the cost claimed on the... See, that would be that... <coughs> The cost of the of the court of appeal decision, and then the court maybe of the previous application, but will be can be dealt with separately, you know, and in a separate way than this this application. I mean, well, the reason I'm here is I think this is going to be the final order for this case, and so it ought to deal with all the costs that have gone before, and we, that's why we're asking for hundred thousand. If the court is more minded to the order a lesser amount, of fifty thousand, and I think we can agree to that. If no, what I'm actually saying, if, if this item of the uh, draft order would delay the issuance of this order, so it should not be a, a problem or a, a problematic because all of the costs can be dealt with even outside this order, isn't it? Because your cost is going to be your cost and the case must deal with it anyway. That's correct. You could delete that paragraph five and an issue the rest of the order and the cost is not agreed then be dealt with in the normal way. But I think the claimant's application is that we would like 50% of the costs paid, or at least some of those costs paid up front uh, within the 14 days. And then we can put the estimate there. Again, with reference to the course of appeal hearing and with reference to the uh, the application being decided yesterday. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. or, or on the Court of Appeal? Yeah, and the primary plan. But all the costs that weren't agreed for the Court of First Instance application. Because that application was on jurisdiction. So the cost related to the application of jurisdiction doesn't relate to, for example, putting a claim together that we find. Right. And that sort of work. That's still to be claimed for. So you have the claim costs, Court of Appeal costs, the cost for the application that's built on the papers, right. and today's costs. Let's hear from the defendant. Well, Your Honor, I, I'm somewhat confused because it was my understanding um, that, and, and certainly my client's understanding, that the settlement of costs were those costs up until, all inclusive, up until the end of the um, water first instance hearing. So therefore, the costs that should be outstanding are those that have been incurred since. Right. So certainly that, that's the uh, defendant's understanding of the cost issue itself. So it's not simply a case of well, we can agree and put in our costs because we don't agree that there should be any costs other than after. Well, uh, I'm just like you. I, I have no idea about because since I didn't have a bundle, I didn't have a full mm. details of, yeah. of, of these issues. So, 
you saying the cost of fir, court of first instance, the previous application was yes. dealt with completely? Dealt with completely, and been, as far as we're, we are. Uh, it's been paid as well? Do, do you say it's, yes. it's been paid? It's been paid. So and it's been accepted that it was paid. Yeah, that was paid. I think the issue is that we, we say that was, that was the court of first hearing of this claim right. for their jurisdiction application. Yeah. So for the cost that we put in for that 35,000, the, the application, it wasn't, for example, the time spent drafting the claim for. I think then it comes down to a claim form and yeah. thereafter the appeal costs. So the initial the initial claim form, the, the court of appeal form. and this application before us. Um, so yes. Yeah, right. Your Honor, that, that, that seems to be the case. Um, and, yes, <laughs> and, and what kind of problem you see with this now? Is there any problem? Um, well, well, certainly I think um, Your Honour was absolutely right that um, the only way to deal with it is in the usual way, which would be to say um, that detail, subject to a detailed cost assessment. Um, let, might I just take instructions on something? Yes, yes. Yes. Jan, I, I wonder if we, uh, because of course we would need our um, clients' instructions on this. I know my, the Malone friends put forward perhaps a lower figure. So I wonder if in those. Uh, it's not even a lower figure. They even propose to take off uh, paragraph 5 at all. Mm -hmm. And even in regard of paragraph 4, which you uh, insist there should be uh, what's called <coughs> a detailed assessment. Yes. So usually what the registrar do, if it's not agreed, he would move automatically to the detailed assessment. So you're not proposing anything new. No, so... No, sorry, if I just clarify, I wasn't proposing to remove paragraph 5. Oh, sorry. What I was I, saying I, is you could remove paragraph 5 and continue. You don't have to order uh, payment on account costs. Obviously, the practice direction is there. Yeah, yeah I'm saying that so because I said, I said I would consider that a proposal to go on with this. Mm -hmm. Uh, consent order, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I think our position would be that you ought to make uh, 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 an order on the power of five for at least some money to be paid on account, because obviously there will be some money that should be paid on account. And what's the minimum you can accept in this? Well, I mentioned 50,000, but I think anything else you can say, if I can say 25,000, I think we can all agree that the costs that we're going to be talking about would at least be twice that. So that You kill 25? Um, I think that's a quarter of what you've been I would, asking. I would have to take instructions on it um, because, of course, it's, it's not my decision, it's my client's decision, but it wouldn't take very long to make those inquiries. If I could make those, and then perhaps we could um, conclude. I, I should say that this isn't a, a, a consent order. Um, whilst we don't have any submissions to make in this substantive case, um, we, we don't consent to it. Of course, Your Honour, it's entirely. Um, his right to make the order. Um, so I, I just make that point that it's not a consent order. So it's a, you're saying it's not a consent order? It's not a consent if you agree to the term of it, so it's not consent? It, it, the order can be made, of course, and, and, and um, as we've said um, yesterday and today, we don't make any further submissions on the substantive claim um, because that's been ruled on. So if, you, if you have no further submission, and then if you have no uh, objections, and to the terms put before you, um, you still call it it's not unconsent, and then uh, you, you, your only observation is that you will seek uh, instruction from your client as regard to the $25,000 uh, asked by the claimant. Is that right? Uh, Yona, I was going to move on to um, paragraph 3 also. The interest is claimed. I thought that you said you didn't have further uh, submission of that. No further submissions on the substantive case, but oh. Your Honour, if you'd like me to address the um, interest and costs. Right. Um, the rules at um, paragraph 4526, interest on judgment de debts. Say it again. Um, uh, the, rules 4526. Yeah.
Yes. Um, state that um, in the proceedings um, the claimant must include details in his application, the amount of interest, the dates from and to it's accrued and the rate of interest. The claim form um, is entirely silent. It simply states interest. So I would make that point. Um, and as to... Sir, I, I think I'm reading a different article. Are you reading from the RDC? Yes, 4526. If a judgment creditor is claiming interest on a judgment debt, he must include in his application or request um, in relation to that judgment details of the amount of interest claimed, the dates from and to which interest is accrued, and the rate of interest. Yeah, I see, I see your point here. Mm. Um, and on the claim form is silent on, on that. So in my submission, um, the claimant has not um, certainly put forward for you uh, why he claims um, 8%. Yes. And indeed, the um, rules from this court on interest are, as I understand it, um, that it's 1% over the um, EBOR rate for DIC judgments. You're almost right. Any comments? Your Honour, yes. Um, in relation to the claim for interest, the first point is the claimant should be entitled to the interest from the date of the English judgment onwards so it hasn't been satisfied and it should have been satisfied. Secondly, my learned point, uh, friend's point about uh, Rule 4520.26, um, I'll be quick and wrong, but I believe that Part 44, 45 section relates to the general rules of enforcement of judgments and orders of this court, what we are asking for is we are asking for interest subsequent to the judgment that we hope that you will make. But the, the substantive interest we are asking for is the interest from the English judgment from back in 2014 up until the date. Are uh, you saying it's not now, our court judgment related interest? It is well, it's related to the English judgment. Yes. And we made a claim for the enforcement of that and for interest. Now, I can accept the point that we ought to state what that interest is, and we have stated it in this draft order. And if the point is taken that it should have been completed before, um, then uh, you know, we can apologise for that. But fundamentally, what our point is that we do claim interest. We are coming to 8%, but obviously, we'll leave it in the court's hands for what they believe, or the court believes, is an appropriate interest rate to apply in these circumstances. Um, so we have put forth 8%, we've given the calculation for that. But I just want to make the point that we're talking about interest on the judgment of the English courts from. Does the English judgment provide any percentage of the interest? No. No. Well, it is in the paper, which you don't have them. I do have it here, which is it's a very short order. Right. It doesn't provide for interest in this judgment. Right. We are asking for interest, uh, nonetheless, not pursuant to the jurisdiction of the English court, but your jurisdiction here as any other debt that hasn't been paid. So that's why we say, um, as with any other debt that hasn't been paid, there should be interest in these circumstances should be 8% because we've not had our money uh, for over a year and a half. So if the English judgments never provide you, I mean, or granted you uh, the interest, so on what basis are you claiming this? Because and there is no other DIFC court granting you the interest well, of, of this judgment, yeah, isn't it? Let me just um, make some submissions on that. The judgment here... The you should have made it earlier, not now. Well, we did not make a claim in the claim form that we would be claiming interest. We're claiming interest on the judgment. We're not claiming interest on the debt that the judgment relates to. Yep. We're not asking for anything before October 2014. Because that would be dealt with by the English court. Right. For whatever reason, I don't have the details. There's no interest in fine. We're not bothered about that. What we are asking for is that we've received this judgment from the English court. It hasn't been satisfied for the past year and a half. Obviously, that's cost us money in terms of the value of money. That's why we have interest. And therefore, if, as we hope, you will uh, recognise and enforce this foreign uh, English judgment, then you should also order interest pursuant to your powers under the RDC uh, and the court law. You can order interest for payments on uh, judgments with the debt. And this is a judgment debt like anything else. You should order interest for that. Yeah.
Yeah, right. I, under, I understand your submission now, but uh, my question is that don't you think the interest has to be ordered by, by a court first instead of just you you ask for it and, and I mean, through, no, that's, that's exactly through, we're through the enforcement yet. process. But we're not in the enforcement process yet. We are asking you for a judgment of the IT courts. Yeah. And that's, part of that judgment will be a judgment for interest. No, we, we are at what stage now? We are at substantive hearing of this claim to recognize Recognize and ratify judgment. judgment. Yeah, we're not going to the enforcement stage yet. We just want a judgment from the interest uh, court. And what's saying. ratification do with the granting interest? What? Well, it's, it's essentially a claim for you to order as a DIT judge that the judgment is being recognized, not like an award, but as a debt. Right. And therefore you order yourself the money that's been ordered by the English courts. And what we are saying is we want that, but we also want interest, because we haven't had that, that money for a year and a half. And you have the power to order interest under the, the rules. And my learned friend pointed you to some, albeit rules regarding the AIT judgment. Well, I'm afraid I might ask you to put some sort of a very short uh, written submission in this regard. So you, you think I have the authority to order cost, uh, sorry, uh, interest at this level? Absolutely, only yes. So you you think? have the broad powers to order brief. Even though I'm not hearing the substantial claim? Well, you are hearing the substantial claim. The substantial claim is you should... A substantial claim heard by the English court. This is all enforcement of procedures. This is, well, this is a claim. This is a fresh claim on the judgment that we're asking. Now, in other circumstances, my learned friend may have raised submissions to say you shouldn't recognise the judgment because it was a thing by fraud, it was X, Y, Z. Now, they haven't made those submissions, uh, and therefore we're not dealing with anything like that, but this is still the substantive hearing for this claim, and you have to make a judgment as to whether you will accept the English judgment and issue the order that we've suggested. Well, it's substantive in terms of ratification only. It's not in terms of granting damages, granting whatever. Well, in the claim form, we've asked for interest. So we've made a claim for interest. And, and I think the, the short point is that you can deal with claims of interest. And then you need to convince me why you have the right now to ask this court to grant you this interest if the, if the original judgment never grants you the same. Because the original judgment, which was made back in October 2014, yeah. See, was made in October 2014, make some a year and a half, and it hasn't been paid. Make submission and show me what's, what kind of power I have to grant you this interest at, at this Thank level, you. in this form. Am I clear on that? Uh, yes, yes. Right. So, right. Yes, again, what other points you want to take? This is, we dealt with number three now. Yes. Uh, there is anything in regard to number one and two? Um, I think that it's just the English judgment, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and, and, and I make no submissions on, on yeah. that. Um, do, do, you, do you reserve your right to uh, reply to the submission would be made by the claimant in regard of the interest? Your Honour, yes, if I may. Oh, okay, so I'll grant you that. You have no problem with the number one. You have no problem with number two. We will ask for a submission. On what basis the claimant can seek this kind of relief at this stage? And you will allow to reply to that. Thank you, uh, In regard of number four, uh, I think since we knew that, so mm -hmm. there is no agreement, detailed assessment would take place, so it would make no differences. Mm -hmm. In terms of number five, so you will come back to me after seeking uh, Your Honor, yes. Perhaps, um, advice from your client in regard to accept at least the minimum of 25,000 and deposit mm -hmm. of a partial cost. Yes. Right? You all agree? Your Honor, yes. I didn't know if you were able to agree a time frame for those written submissions. Can you submit it today? Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to submit today, unfortunately. Um, Just tell me when. Yeah. What we were going to ask for is for a week for our submissions and then a week for the response to the submissions. I thought you are in a hurry. You know, I'm leaving for London today. All so right. I'm going to be away for a week. Right. It's a so I'm being told maybe we can, we can have ours by the end of Sunday. Uh, it's, it's your case. I don't mind, actually. But I hope it will be faster than that. Okay. We could um, please have it till the end of Sunday. So, so that would be submissions on Sunday and submissions on 
Yeah. Right. By by Sunday, maximum of five pages. Max. No more than that. No more than that. Ma <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sunday, and then the deadline for the defendant to make submission another three days. That make it Monday, Tuesday, and the end of Wednesday. Thank you, Your Yes. And you would advise the course in regard of uh, number item five yes. by the same time? Only yes. Right? Thank you. Okay. Are there any items or things need to discuss um, for this afternoon? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All rise.